Well, it's been almost exactly two years, and finally, the pandemic is dissipating. We made our choices, we learned our lessons, and it's a new dawn. And it's a new season for the year 2022, and a new time for all of us to embrace. New life, new opportunities, new abundance. And while we balance our care and genuine prayer for peace, and the awareness of a world that still includes unthinkable tragedy and sorrow and even war, we also are grateful for how blessed we are. And、so let us use this spring of 2022 to take everything that we've learned, clear the past, and move forward in gratitude for the freedom that we have, for the blessings of our lives, for the opportunity to come together again in community, online, and yes, in person. We are all part of the awakening world, and we all have the roles that we're playing as individuals and collectively. We are the imaginal cells finding each other to create a beautiful, incredible butterfly out of the old paradigm. So, welcome to spring of 2022. Welcome to the awakening world. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. We're coming together, stronger than ever, not divided. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. We're coming together, hear the call, you are invited. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. Welcome, everybody. I am Love Coach Scott Katamas, and welcome to the Awakening World, our early Zoom Room show. This is always really fun because we get to connect with some of our favorite early Zoom Roomers.、Um, you know what to do. Let us know where you're from geographically.、Um, and already, I see a lot of our friends that are always here at the beginning. Thank you. You know, when you see the Awakening World, it says about relationships with the Earth and with each other. And of course, I'm a love coach, and I'm really excited because tonight I get to introduce you to some of my favorite people on the planet,、um, many of whom I've worked with for years that are part of Love Coach Academy, but are also part of this wonderful new platform that we're collaborating with this weekend. In fact, we collaborated with them about I think six or seven weeks ago, and we said let's do it again because. If we really want to change our lives, we need to change our relationships. That's the quickest, easiest way to really make a difference in our lives, and even in our world. Let's face it: we don't really have any control over what Biden or Trump or Putin do, but we have tremendous control over how we treat the people in our world. So this weekend is all about. How can we improve all of our relationships, family, friends, beloveds,、um, even people that we work with? That's what it's all about. And I'm going to start by bringing on, and I think he proudly wears the mantle of being a relationship geek. I know that he and I have been geeking out over relationship for many, many years, since we first met at a at a tantra festival in Hawaii. I'm talking about Steve Rowland. And Steve is so dedicated to what I've just been talking about, improving relationships, that he has spent a lot of time and energy creating relation flicks. So, welcome, Stephen, and、um, just briefly tell tell our audience, remind them, because most of them were here before, a little bit about relation flicks. Hey, thank you so much again for having me, Scott.、Um, yeah, I just want to to echo what you just said.、Uh, it's just been a, a total treat and delight to to connect at all the levels that we have in the last little while, professionally and、uh, at the level of friendship as well. So, 
yeah, it's just been just been a real treat being connected. And so thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, Relation Flix is um, it's it's uh, a, a big project that we've been working on for a few years. Uh, myself and a team of pro videographers and filmmakers, as well as a team of elite relationship coaches, Amazon best-selling authors, therapists, workshop facilitators, essentially experts in the relationship, communication skills, conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, universes, all coming together to produce some really high quality video content. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's been a real treat to steward the process of, of bringing this into the world. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's available there for you. Uh, there's courses and single, single videos that range anywhere from five to 15 minutes in length uh, for a little bite-sized chunk all the way up to like full on multi-hour deep dive online courses. And, and that's all there for you. And if you'd like to check it out, you can sign up for a 14 day free trial at the link in the chat. And we will also show it to you a few times. I'm going to bring on briefly um, some of the people that are coaches that are part of Relation Flicks. And then we also have a special guest. Um, but we'll, we'll start with Paul Sterling. <coughs> and Paul has been a big part of Love Coach Academy. He's a big part of Relation Flicks. And Jessica Osterday. And Jessica is brilliant. She is a remarkably talented woman. And we're going to learn all about brain spotting um, and to be honest I've used brain spotting like when I've been needing support I've gone to Jessica she's also part of Love Coach Academy somebody that I met through um, Relation Flix is Arika Periones and she is the moment I met her through through Stephen I was so impressed with her wisdom and her ability to articulate and really talk about some of the hard stuff so I'm really delighted to have her back with us and we have a new friend who I actually just met for the first time a few minutes ago, all the way from down under, uh, Byron Bay. This is Damien. So welcome, Damien. And then I also invited Amakela. And although Amakela is not part of Relation Flex, she is one of the wisest woman, women that I've had Aww. the chance to meet. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> your, your love of humanity mm -hmm. and the, the way you walk the talk the actions that you take, you are a walking model for the world I want to live in. Mm. So thank you, Alma Kayla, for being with us. Um, and I think I've got everybody here. So I'm going to bring everybody on at once so you can see our little early Zoom room group. And I'm asking everyone the same question. And you'll each have like three minutes to answer the question. And the question is, what is your best tip for when you're having a conflict with someone you care about, someone you want to have a good relationship with, but they just get under your skin. And maybe one of you can choose a lover relationship. Maybe one of you can choose a family relationship. Um, that might be, you know, if possible, I and mean, I kind of mix up. So who would like to go first? We'll go popcorn style. Who would like to tackle it first? I'll go first. All right, Stephen, you're up. Spotlight on your part. Great. So this is the tip that we talked about. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a, a Scott Katamas uh, puppet here, and um, and and echo something that I learned in one of the many courses that I've taken with Love Coach Academy, and that's that's the importance of learning how to manage our discomfort. And um, I actually gave a gave a workshop on conflict resolution today, so it's actually particularly alive. And there's this there's this very particular thing that comes up, like when when let's say it's with a romantic partner, and our partner approaches us with something that they're upset about that we've done, and there's kind of like this like slippery slope that can run for some people. That's something to the effect of like most people inherently want to be what they would classify as a good person who does good in the world. And, and a lot of people hold that self-identity. And when our partner approaches us with an, upset, with an upset, chances are that upset is something in the realm of there was a lack, there was a moment where there was a lack of love or a lack of integrity. Those tend to be the kind of two core pieces of, of relationship conflict. 
And if we let our self-identity of being a good person get in the way, it can elicit a defensive res defensive response where we try to push back. And there's like a, almost like a subconscious level, our ego tries to protect ourselves from having to take ownership and admit that we slipped up and we may not be the good person for that moment that we thought we might've been. And um, yeah, yeah, it's like we're really where humility comes into play and, and a willingness to, to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, where was I less than love or less than integrity in that moment, rather than going into a defensive response and circling back to the tip of, of managing our discomfort, then um, that, that's, that's just such a huge skill where we can self-soothe and give ourselves an emergency dose of self-empathy as, as you and Marshall Rosenberg have taught and, and find a way where we can center ourselves so that we can approach the situation from compassion and empathy rather than from a more defensive posture. That is such a, a great first tip and just an interesting little factoid. When someone gets into a big fight and they display um, something in their personality that is radically different from their self-concept or the way they want to be seen, they actually can forget that they didn't say it or that they did what they, what, that they said what they said or they did what they did. And I've actually observed that as a coach. I've observed seeing someone get really upset, say something terrible, and honestly, five seconds later, didn't realize that the exact words that came out of their mouth. It's a really interesting thing about the human ego. So great first tip. Um, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And yeah, let's all like when we, we get reactive and we got to slow down, manage our own discomfort, be centered and see what's going on with the other person. It was a great start. I'm going to go to Paul Sterling next. Um, Paul didn't know that I was going to do that, but uh, there he just happens to have the book. Hold it up. Go ahead. Argue less, love more. Um, and it's like some people say, you know, I only make the same mistake once. I said, I made the same mistake so many times I wrote a book about it. Um, so argue less, love more is all about the five mistakes people make that create conflict. But once you're in a conflict, the, the thing is we communicate from three parts of our brain. This is an oversimplification, but from our head, our heart, and our hurt. And when we're in our hurt, it's we're in our reptile side of the brain. And there's, it's almost impossible to win an argument with a reptile or even create connection and compassion with a reptile. So the simple, not easy, but simple trick or technique or however you want to say it is to get somebody out of their reptile brain and into their heart and if you think about it the reptile is looking for two main things are you my enemy or my ally and the more that i tell somebody they shouldn't be feeling the way they are or they shouldn't be thinking the way they are the more i seem like an enemy and the more stuck they get so they're looking at enemy ally are you safe or are you dangerous so I'm going to tell a longer story later, but the magic key here, and please write it down. Someone write it in here. If, if I was in an argument with Stephen and said, I probably wouldn't call him honey, but I, you could, I still could do that. I go, honey, what do you need to feel safe right now? And that communicates directly to the reptile brain. And it tells him I'm your ally and your safety is my concern. Rather than me telling him, Stephen, that's a stupid thought to have and you shouldn't be thinking the way you are and on and on. And by the way, I'm friends with Stephen. So this is, we, we can have this kind of conversation. So that's the simple tip is to get people out of their hurt, that reptile part of their brain and back into their heart or into their head. So that's it for now, Scott. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. I am going to go to Amakela Gaston next. Um, uh, and um, Amakela, first of all, thank you for being on the show today. Of course, what fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think what a great question. And I think that um, in addition to what my beautiful brethren have just said, I think 
one of the things that always helps me whenever like it starts ratcheting up, ratcheting up, ratcheting up, is I just have to remember, I'm just a reflection of you. And I have to remind myself that whatever's causing the we're we have the similar story there's something that's causing this tension and so i have to recognize that tension and honor that story and then i have to interrupt that story like whatever is making me freak out about it or whatever it is and then i want to repair it and so i kind of go through this process of like slowing down having that snickers moment doing the whole safe scene soothe secure process that paul was just talking about and and getting to a place of like sitting down, settling down, and recognizing that they're upset, I'm upset, and we're probably upset about the same core element from something that has nothing to do with the moment that we're in right now. It's probably some ancient story that I have from when my mom said the same thing or da 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 da, whatever it is, and some ancient thing that does not apply to this, but it does in my body and it does in my partner's body. And so that's what I have to try and remember, that reflection. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to call upon now Erika to hear your thoughts, your wisdom for, you know, what do you do when it happens for you? I love what Michaela said about the reflection piece. And I had this quote from my mentor just came up as she was speaking. And that is bring the trigger to the mirror, the boundary to the person. Again, bring the trigger to the mirror, the boundary to the person. And for me, what it means is bring the trigger to yourself. Like when we are activated, when we're feeling anger and fear, instead of lashing out, that's what my family taught me is go within, you know, like shake, get into the primal, get into the animal, release it. And when you're ready, speak from your boundary, from a place of integrity and love and compassion. And so that's something that reminds me to, again, focus on like going within. And when you're ready, you can have that conversation where you're feeling the triggers, but it's coming from a place of love and understanding. So that is my answer. <laughs> I was muted. Good, good one. Thank you. Um, Damien, what are your thoughts? So... I have a very strong orientation towards wanting to transform or develop. So conflict to me is a real opportunity to growing into something more. So I'm going to consider the example of being in a, in a romantic partnership, being in a partnership. It's like something you actually really want to feel more love in. You actually want to grow and deepen into your love. And so for me, co conflict is often um, a defensive pattern, some kind of aspect of us that is blocking ourselves from, um, from from being able to experience the kind of the love and intimacy that we want so first of all just to like echo what paul was sharing that you know when we're triggered our kind of reptile brain gets activated so we actually need to regulate that part first and <clears throat> remember not really to like spend a lot of time sense making and be very careful of what we're saying when we're in that dysregulated state but as we start to like settle out of it, one of the things, well, a couple of things that are really important to me is one, staying in, just being really willing to stay in with a partner. Like I'm not actually going to leave. I'm not going to threaten to leave. I'm not actually going to use this as an excuse to create rupture. I'm not going to try and carry resentment. And if there's any sense of that, that, that means that I actually need to lean back in more. And I tend to like focusing on the second part of a conflict, which is the sense making. And for me, this is an opportunity. What I really love is how can we get a bit transpersonal with it? How can we actually create an object out of the conflict? So we can look at, we can collaborate together and make sense of what is actually occurring between us to create this conflict. And this can take a while sometimes, a collective sense-making process. We're actually, analyzing isn't quite the right word, but we're actually looking at this conflict from, from the sense of like, what is actually occurring here? What are your needs, wants, desires, boundaries, et cetera? That, what are mine? What's actually happening here? And here we become teammates. We become players um, in this shared sense-making process. And I really have been enjoying, I don't know if anyone out here has had any experience with the gene keys. It's a very interesting way of using um, a transpersonal kind of objective sense-making process around conflict, so. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I actually have a, a partner, Eden Almadora, who loves the gene keys and she talks a lot about it. 
Um, I'm the Venus sequence is amazing for that. Yeah, it. We we actually should do an entire show on it. So mm -hmm. if it's something you're well versed in, let me know. And we'll I love it. Back. Yeah. Hey, yep. I'm going to bring on. Um, he just joined us, and this is the other uh, kind of key person of Relation Flex. This is Dolphin Casper. And uh, welcome, Dolphin. He was taking care of his little person. How old is your son now? Uh, <clears throat> just past 13 months now. Just past 13 months. Well, okay, so the question is, how do you manage um, difficulty? And we've heard variations of calming down, getting centered. So I'm going to ask you a specific one. How do you manage it with a 13-month-old, right? Like for with my anybody... partner or when when me and my son are in, in a, a power struggle? How about both? Because people, some, <laughs> not everybody has a 13 month old child. So how do you manage when you get triggered staying centered and hearing your partner? Maybe your partner has a different strategy of how to deal with, you know, your son who's upset. How do you manage that balance of mm. taking care of yourself, taking care of your child, taking care of your partner? Yeah, beautiful question. I mean, it, uh, I'll be honest, it's a lot. It, it, there's, there's so much to hold. Um, all of your stuff is going to get triggered. Like in a long-term partnership, this, your stuff is going to get triggered, but then you introduce a child and it just, it ratches it up all the, all of the space and time and sort of recovery time you used to have, you don't have anymore. So it's just a whole other world of, of navigating under non-optimal circumstances. Uh, which I think what, what Damien just said is brilliant. If we can create a context for it where we're not here to have a nice time all the time. I think that's a terrible framework for, for relationship. It should feel great some of the time, but, but we need to know that some of it is going to be extremely uncomfortable and difficult. And it's not going to feel clear that, that everything is all good. And so we need a, a container to hold those moments where it doesn't feel good. And so I, I'm going to introduce a, a way to look at conflict um, where I think we can approach getting better at conflict from two primary areas, approaching getting better at conflict when we're dysregulated and approaching getting better at conflict when we're regulated. And there are very different things that make sense to do depending on those states of the nervous system. And, and so, you know, I'll just briefly touch into each of them. And then I'll talk about the strength of a partnership when both people, I love what you said. I was actually just going to introduce this idea of, can we check in with our partner and look into each other's eyes and, and really get that we are on the same team? Can you look into your partner's eyes and say, I'm on your team and have them say that to you and that you both really get that your partner is being sincere in that. If you don't have that, all of the conflict resolution in the world isn't going to help you because when the chips fall, you're not on the same team. So, so that's, so first is like, are we on the same team? And then when I'm regulated, that's a time for us to talk about the triggers as best we can talk about the precursors. What are the signals and signs when we start to get dysregulated, when maybe we still have executive functioning and much more of our sense making online? Um, can we support maximizing the times in which we're regulated and supporting each other and implementing the right kind of strategies when we disagree? Uh, do we know the times? Like maybe it's when, when you both get home from work and you check in and that's like your high conflict time. Okay, well, you know when it's coming. So let's put some pieces in place. Let's have strategies. Let's make sure we take care of one or two things that, that help to smooth out some of the rockiness of getting home together after a long day. So these are really practical, pragmatic things we can do when we're regulated, when we have our executive functioning, when we're problem solving and all of that's good. Then the question is, well, how do we get better when we're dysregulated? And, and I, there's a couple of ways that I think are really helpful. There's more than two, but these are two that I think will be easy, quick takeaways for people. So one is um, getting honest with yourself about your go-to mechanisms when you feel triggered. What is your thing? Do you blame? Do you shame? Do you distract? Do you deflect? Do you uh, tell stories? Be transparent with yourself and your partner. Like these are the things that help me feel somehow safe and secure when I'm not feeling that way in conflict and figure out alternatives to your go-tos that just don't work. So have a whole, have like a little tool belt 
don't get complicated, but like two or three things that you can start to do or practice that work in conflict versus your go-tos that just don't work in conflict. So that's one simple one. The other one that is just, so I worked in sport for years. I worked with professional athletes for a number of years. And, and what training is really for is to create as much, as much of a competition environment as possible so that when the athletes are in the competition environment, it's like, oh, I'm at home here. I know this pressure. I know this anxiety in my body. I know this intensity. And so what we tend not to do is we tend not to consciously and willingly put ourselves in the sense and the feeling and the framing of, of conflict and get better at it when the stakes are low. And so I, I talk with a lot of my clients about rehearsal. Can you each and potentially together recreate the, the most likely and the most challenging conflict triggers and dynamics and put yourself there? Visualize being there. Notice the, the, the posture, how your posture changes. Notice how the sensations in your body change. Notice how the thinking and the emotionality changes in your system. Put yourself in that moment, turn up the volume on the intensity of those feelings, and then watch yourself doing it poorly. And then again, watch yourself doing it really well. And you can actually cycle through this rehearsal process around the primary conflicts in your life or your relationship. And just doing this in a sincere way makes you much better. It makes you more aware when the trigger comes. It makes you more uh, cognizant to the options at, at hand when you're dysregulated. And it allows you with your partner to begin becoming really well-versed in what works and what doesn't when you're both in that dysregulated state. So, you know, first, I think we need to be on board to really engage the conflict in a wholehearted way because we're on the same team and that matters to us and that we know the opportunity there. And then those two approaches, the kind of getting clear about the triggers and the go-to uh, protective mechanisms and replacing them with something better, and then actually rehearsing uh, in our minds or with our partner if they're willing to play in that space with us. And those make a huge difference. Beautiful, thank you so, so much. Um, and just a quick, quick reminder that you can get a lot of wisdom from people like Dolphin and all the people you're seeing by going to relationflix.com, relationflix.com. We're we'll going to be talking about it throughout the next two hours, um, but they are offering a free trial. So right now, go do it. Um, there's Erika, who we're going to hear from. Ariel, we're going to hear from tomorrow. And so it's, it's the thing to do. Dolphin, thanks you again. I need to get us going and ready because it's six o'clock and time to go live on Facebook. <laughs>